Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Ha, ah, that was a good relief. That one is gone. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, this morning, the Lord will bless somebody. Amen. If you are that person, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, it is not, it is not, uh, it is not an accident. What's going on? It is not an accident that God said to us this month that it was our month of good courage. He knew what was coming. He knew what was happening. He knew where everything was going because he's Alpha and Omega. And I'm encouraged because once God knows about a thing, he already, he already Taking, he had already taken care of it. I thought I would hear an amen. amen. So come and say with me, God is taking care of me. Oh, Hallelujah. Of me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning, I want to share with us, God helping me very fast. I want to share with us, understanding the power of prayer in the midst of discouraging circumstances. Understanding the power of prayer in the midst of discouraging circumstances. There are circumstances that we face per time. But this morning, I want to encourage people to pray. Hallelujah. If we do not pray, we become a prey in the hands of the devil. Hallelujah. The Bible says we are sojourners on this earth. We are sojourning. We are on a journey. But I pray that you will end your journey in glory and honor. Amen. In Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 12, he says, Jeremiah 29 verse 12, he says, Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me. And I will hearken unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ, as you give yourself to prayer, may the Lord hearken unto you. Amen. I said, may the Lord hearken unto you. Amen. He said, you will go and call upon me. Calling upon me and praying is another thing. And pray unto me. He said, and I will hearken. I will hearken. I will hearken. Ah, may God hear you. Amen. God expects that we should pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, grace to pray. Even in an uncomfortable and disturbing circumstance. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good courage strengthens our heart. Hallelujah. We saw it when we were praying in the, in the intercession. Good courage is designed to strengthen you. Why? Because there are many things on this earth, many things we are engaged in that can weaken our heart. When the heart is weakened, then it, is, it, 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 it can be exposed to all kinds of uh, problems. You know, the heart will begin to have heart problems. And when the heart begins to have problems, then the man carrying the heart is having problems. I pray whatsoever represents a problem or a challenge, your prayer will defeat that problem. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. God's word said in Psalm 27 and verse 14. Psalm 27 and verse 14. He said, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Come on, say with me. Be of good courage. Oh, help me announce it in, in faith to your neighbor. Be of good courage. He said, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he, God, shall do what? Strengthen your heart until you are of good courage. Your heart does not receive strength. You must begin to place value on good courage so that your heart can receive the strength to withstand the challenges of your circumstance, the challenges of this earth. Remember, the Bible says that ah, in the day that you, you know, if, if, you, if, you, if you turn back in the time of war, ah, you know what is happening? 
your strength is small. God may not take the war away. God may not take the challenge away. But God expects that you be strong and be of good courage. You know why? Because he promised you victory. And for victory to come, you must engage in wars. There will be challenges. And Jesus Christ says, tribulation will definitely come. He said, but be of good courage. He said, cheer up. <laughs> for I have overcome for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I call you an overcomer. Amen. Ah, concerning that particular challenges that you are facing privately, I call you a victor. Amen. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he, God, will see reading to strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. When people do not find value in waiting upon the Lord, their heart becomes weak. When they take things into their hands, when they begin to do things the way they want it to be done, when you are so selfish that it is the way you want it, that is how you will do it. Then your heart is weakened. And when your heart is weakened, you are not qualified for any war. If you are not qualified for war, then you have a one choice. Either to die or to be subjected to that problem. Ah, may problem not rule your life. Amen. You will just become a slave to the circumstance. The circumstance tell you this is what you do and you will do it. This is what you should go, you should do it. Instead of God being your shepherd, the problem becomes your shepherd. That shall not be you. Amen. I, I said that shall not be you. Amen. And just like Saul was saying, he said it is because of the people. That's why I did it. Is it the people that should tell you what to do? Is it the circumstance that should tell you what to do? No, but you see, circumstance can speak to us and command us. If our heart becomes weakened, because one of the things Saul was not doing, he was not waiting on the Lord. He was not taking commandment from the Lord. He was not taking instruction from the Lord. So his heart became weakened and the people began to control him. And then he had a problem. The kingdom was torn away from him. Ah, your kingdom will not be torn away from you. Amen. He said, wait upon the Lord. The Bible says in the mouth of two or three weakness, a word shall be established in Psalm 31. Psalm 31 and verse 24. Psalm 21, uh, 31 rather, Psalm 31 and verse 24. The Bible says there, he said, be of good Courage, and he shall do what? Psalm 31 and verse 24. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. So you see, the issue is, is a heart issue. Hallelujah. It's a heart. So I want to encourage you to do the things that will strengthen your heart in these tough times that we are in. Things are getting tougher. Things are getting more complicated. Then you need to upgrade the strength of your heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Upgrade the strength of your heart. Don't live by the strength of your heart or before. You need to upgrade. If you don't upgrade it, the problem is mounting. It's not waiting. Just as the time is ticking, tick-tack, tick-tack, the challenge is also increasing. Then you, you must take responsibility to start, you know, upgrading the issues of your heart, the strength of your heart. Go and go for more strength. Go to the spiritual gym and begin to press up and begin to exercise yourself more in the word of God to strengthen your heart. You have been praying before. You need to go deeper in prayer. You have been involved before. Get more involved. It is time to go deeper. Let me tell you, it's time to go deeper. Glory be to Jesus. Prayer is very, very important. It's a heart matter. And I think we need to pray that in this month of good courage, Father, strengthen my heart. Would you like to pray that prayer? Please rise up on your feet. Father, in this month of good courage, in the name of Jesus, strengthen my heart. Lift up your voice and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, in this month of good courage, ah, are you lifting up your voice? Father, strengthen my heart. Father, strengthen my heart. 
God. In this month of good courage, are you praying? Father, strengthen my heart. In this month of good courage, oh God, I call upon you that in the name of Jesus, strengthen my heart, oh God. Strengthen my heart, oh God. In this month of good courage, Ninalo Sagagalaba. Lord, strengthen my heart. Jehovah, strengthen my heart. Cry to God to strengthen your heart. The waters of life must not overwhelm you. Father, strengthen my heart. In the name of Jesus, in this month of good courage, strengthen my heart. My heart must not fail. My heart must not fail. My heart must not fail. Father, strengthen my heart. My heart shall not fail. In the name of Jesus, in this month of good courage, my Father and my God, strengthen my heart. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Please be seated. I hear the voice of the Lord saying, He said clearly, He said, Until the heart fails, the faith does not fail. Hallelujah. Until the heart fails, the faith does not fail. It is heart failure that results in faith failure. It is heart failure that results in faith failure. Jesus Christ, ah, Peter, I have prayed for you so that your faith does not fail. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, your heart will not fail. Ah, in the name of Jesus, your, your heart will not fail. Thank you, mighty God. Good courage motivates you to do. Hallelujah. Amen. And faith is not just professing or talking. It is about doing. Doing something that looks like if you should not do. Doing something that you know you should do, but it's just heavy. You, you don't, it, it, is the realm, it is the realm where impossibilities are being defeated. That it is not possible, but with God, all things are what? It shall be possible for you. Amen. I'm talking about understanding the power of prayer in the midst of discouraging circumstances. <laughs> I mean, Peter said that, I will not de deny you. I'm out of iron to die with you. Okay, he's professing his faith. But when the circumstance happened, I, 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 I have never heard of Jesus Christ before. He denied him. Like, this is disciples that have been walking with Jesus Christ. <laughs> but thank God, before the circumstance happened, Jesus has prayed, Peter, Peter, I can see Satan planning your downfall to sift you as sweet, um, sharp before the wind. Hallelujah. But, but I have seen it, so I prayed. Hallelujah. I have prayed so that your faith does not fail. Because the way you are professing and professing, the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Hallelujah. The way you are professing, I said, hey, your heart is going to fail. I have prayed so that it doesn't fail. Yours will not fail. You know, it is possible as Christians will be saying that, yeah, this, that, that. But when the circumstance happens, you will see Christians deflecting. It's not that they did not mean it. It's not as if they didn't want to do it. No, it is because their heart, hallelujah, their heart has met a circumstance that it will just need this thing they call good eh, courage. So don't condemn those who decide to cross carpet. They saw something. They just could not handle it. And they left. And they decided on something. Or they acted some way. No. Jesus Christ said it is Satan. It is who? Satan. Satan. He's the one doing the manipulation. But when I saw the manipulation, I prayed for you. You were not there. You were busy snoring. Hallelujah. I prayed for you. And I give you the prayer point so that your faith will not 
pray. When we do not know how to pray and how to target our prayer, that is when Satan will have the total victory. Whatever Satan thinks he has gained, you will recover it back. Thank you, mighty God. In 1 Chronicles, 1 Chronicles chapter 28 and verse 20. 1 Chronicles verse 28 and verse 20. Somebody here is going to be blessed. He said, and David said to Solomon his son, be strong and of good courage and do it. Everybody say, do it. I just told you now that what 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 pray what it good courage helps you to do is to do. But if you don't pray, it will be difficult, difficult for you to do. Hallelujah. It's, and David said unto his son, Be strong and are of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. And do it. That difficult task, that mountainous, boisterous act, that thing that is looking as if the whole world is going to cave in on you, he said, because you know what to do, do it, even though it seems as if it's impossible. He said, do it. Fear not, nor be dismayed. For the Lord God, even my God, we do what? We do what? Be with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee, until thou hast finished all the works for the service of the house of the Lord. You will finish well. You will finish great. You will finish gloriously. In the name of Jesus Christ. You see, it is okay to start something. It's okay to be in the middle. But you see, what the devil does not want is for you to get it at the end. There is a crown at the end. God did not say between where you are and between where you are and where the crown, it is going to be easy. There is going to be a fight. So the Bible says, fight the good fight of what? Of faith. And faith is connected to your heart. Can I hear an amen? amen. So understand that it's a faith. So that's why when you see somebody go wrong, don't just go all religious and then you are this and that. The Bible says there is no now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. That's not the time to do that. That's the time to pray. That's the time to put more effort. That is the time to love deeper. That's the time to go deeper. That is time to go deeper. For the Bible says, deep call it unto what? Unto deep. Hallelujah. That's what, it is in the place of prayer that we can, we can re-energize. It's our source where we can be re-energized. Because if we do not re-energize, we will become lukewarm. When we become lukewarm, God said that he will spill us out of his mouth. That will not be you. <laughs> that will not be you. He said, be of good courage and do it. It takes prayer to do it. Hallelujah. Faith is doing what God says for you to do the way he asks you to do it. That's what faith is. Praise God. Doing what God says the way and when he asks you to do it, that's it. What faith is. It's not just only talking. We talk is cheap. Praise God. Let's do this war. Let's do it that one. Let's go and fight war. Hallelujah. And God took his people and said, God said, this people, they are too much. And God began to separate the one that laps, the one that bed down. He said, by the time he severed the voice, you see, the bandwagon is not quality. It is quantity. Hallelujah. Everybody can say yes. That yes, it is not all that went down to the heart. They support you, but they have the limit to which they can support you because of the condition of what they see or what they can handle. Can I hear an amen? amen. I mean, the battery of a car cannot move a trailer. Are you following me? Does that change the fact that that battery is a battery? It is still a battery, but it is not fit for the weight. Hallelujah. It is not okay for the weight. So you must give a corresponding effective battery that, is, that can handle the weight that it can carry. Are you hearing me? So it is very important that we put the right battery. And when we discover that it is not the right battery, then you need to change it and recharge. <laughs> Hallelujah. Change and recharge. Glory be to Jesus. 
Your faith is greater than any bush to us wind. Yeah. Glory be to Jesus. Let the wind come because sometimes you see the wind, the wind will come. God will not stop the wind, but God can rebuke the wind. Are you following me? That's why I tell you, God is interested in your victory, not to prevent you from seeing challenge. Where people who run from challenge, their strength is small. Not that they are even sinners per se. They are just small. It's just small. It's smallness that makes people to run from challenges. It is smallness that we want people to see challenges and say, ah, I beg, I no deal, and just decide to go to where they can be there. <laughs> but in the name of Jesus Christ, because of the great destiny that God has procured for you, in the name of Jesus, victory is yours. Amen. I said victory is yours. <laughs> I said victory is yours. Amen. Instead of attending to distractions of your adversaries, Choose to pray. Your adversary can make noise, threaten you with all they think they know how to do. Perhaps they have been doing it before and they have been getting away with it. Ah, God say relax. I said God say relax. You need to just know what, they know what to do, but you need to know what to do. Hallelujah. As soon as God tells you what to do, come on, just press on. You, they have their source in the devil, but you have your source in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So be of good courage. And the Lord, your God, will strengthen your heart for victory. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hannah could have taken the bait of her adversaries. And get distracted. But God, thank God for her husband. I'm talking about you being encouraged in some kind of terrible circumstances. You, and people face circumstances. Hannah found herself in this situation with her adversary, which happens to be her mate. Marrying the husband together. Two wives. I don't know. And at the end of the day, this woman kept on. She will not be doing her wifey this thing so that this one can be doing her wifey something. She, this, she, her intention is to make sure that this woman fall. Clear this one out. Well, I will bulldoze you. I've been bulldoze. I've been sacking people before. I will also sack you. I've been bringing people down before. You are those go. I will bring you down. You have been doing it. Been, look, they have been doing it for others. But when it comes to you, uh, they will lose the battle. Amen. Say, touch not my anointed. Do my prophet no harm. If you touch my anointed, I touch you. Thank you, mighty God. Yeah. You see, in some circumstances, you will need somebody. And I pray that the kind of people that you are found around you will be such that will stabilize you. Because what is that person that when you are in a circumstance that is very daring and very dangerous, and then you now have somebody who will push you more into it. Ah, who is that person? And Amnon had a friend. Jonathan brought this guy down. Because he had one friend that knows how to manipulate things. But you see, in the case of Anna in 1 Samuel, chapter 1, in the case of Samuel, Samuel, Samuel this guy, he, 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 in case of Anna, rather, this man, he, he, was, he was a stabilizer for Anna. As her adversary was tormenting and tormenting and tormenting, at the point where she was about to blow up, her husband said something that stabilized her. Otherwise, she will stop going to church. And once she stopped going to church, her testimony will be blocked. First Samuel chapter 1 and verse uh, chapter, first Samuel chapter 4. Am I right? Chapter 1, 6 to, six to 8. He said, and when the time when, and when the time was that Ekana offered, he gave to 
Penina, his wife, and to all he has, has sons and a daughter's portion. Look at verse, this other verse. He said, and her adversary also provoked her. Everywhere your adversary have been provoking you. In the name of Jesus, receive spiritual, spiritual stability in the name of Jesus. Amen. What it takes to withstand and overcome them, receive it in the name of Jesus. Because provocation, provocation can make one go wrong. Hallelujah. Not that the person wants to go wrong, but provocation can make one to go wrong. And provocation is a bait. It's a circumstance that if, you, if God does not help you, the person is in trouble. You may be trying to fight a righteous cause, but you will find yourself to be guilty. That's a bait. Watch this. <laughs> And her adversary provoked her soul seriously for to make her do what? Fret. Hallelujah. That is the reason the adversary is the enemy. He is intention. Once you know it, the intention, don't floor him. Hallelujah. To make her to fret because the Lord has shut up her womb. Who is that person because of your, of your circumstance is making a fun of your life? Using your circumstance to choke you in the face every time. Using your circumstance to bring you down. To cut down your morale. Using your circumstance to tell you that you are a no, nobody. You are non entity. You are below. Who is that person? Hear me. Your God is coming for that person. Amen. Your God is coming for that person. <laughs> Thank you, mighty God. He said, watch this, watch this. Because the Lord has shut our womb. And as he did so year by year. So, year, it is not day by day. It is not month by month. It was an issue of year after year that he kept provoking this woman. It's a yearly thing. For, that's why people that don't have this thing they call long suffering, they are in trouble though. Praise God. If you don't have long suffering, you can't survive this circumstance. It is long suffering that can survive this circumstance. But thank God for this husband. That's why when you have somebody who is with you and that can tell you the truth in love, if you let go because of one nonsense you are seeing outside, finish. You have entered to the hand of the devil. Watch this. Watch this. He did that year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord. So she provoked her every time. What he said, every time she wants to go to church. That's when she, she, she found the ember of discouragement. What is the devil trying to do? To make sure that he doesn't get to the place where her testimony will resonate. The testimony that will beat her own testimony. The testimony that will make this woman to know that my Redeemer still live. Hallelujah. My, what? My Redeemer still live. Though he slay me, my Redeemer is still there. This fact of the fact that I'm going through the challenges of life, my Redeemer is still there. But I will go to church. 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 You know what he said? He said, therefore she wept and did not eat. At least she did not eat, but she went to church. <laughs> not going to God's presence is not an option. You not eating is okay. Everybody says, say with me, it's okay. Because you not eating, hey, just end time to fasting. It's okay. But not going to church, that's a trap. You will not enter into your enemy's trap. Watch this. Therefore she wept and did not eat. Then said a kana a husband to her. Anna, why weepest thou? Why eatest thou not? And why is thy what? Heart. Everybody say heart. You see? The attack was the heart. The attack was the heart. The attack was the heart. The enemy was targeting the heart to go weak so that he can fall by the trap. Are you hearing me? Here, he now said, he said, why, why is thy heart grieved? 
am not I better to thee than ten sons? Ah, I am praying for you that in the name of Jesus, the man and the woman and the person that will be by your side will be the one that will spiritually stabilize you. Imagine if the man was not there, that woman would not go to church again. He will not go to church. But you see, it is weird. It is in the temple that her testimony was going to be released. But the enemy does not want you to get there. Because he knows that if you should get there, that is it. He knows. He knows. The devil knows. That is why that woman that, we, uh, that was uh, the 12 years woman licking blood. And all that's the issue of blood. He said, if I may just. <laughs> I'm going to keep pressing. If just, 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 just I, I may be stinky. If only I will, I just want to touch the M of his garment. If I get there, that devil will go down. <laughs> because you have come here today, that devil is giving up. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. That's what God wants to do. I will not leave God. I will not turn my back. I will stay with him. I will press. The Bible says, it says, says am I not better than ten sons? All this thing that this woman is using to, to, to oppress you. All this thing that this woman is using to bring you down. All this thing, am I not better? I am better than all her testimonies. Look at me. I have not left you. That man was a kind of Jesus Christ. <laughs> We are, we are his bride. He is, a, we are, he is our groom. He is our, he is our husband. He, and he, he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. He is better than any man you can ever have. He said, what manner of love can this be? That a man will give his life for his friend. He said, no better love can any man give. No better. That's why you must not let God go. You, and you must not, you must not go from his house. Because it is in his house that you find releases of your blessing. Amen. His, his house, not your house. His house, his house. The temple of the Lord, not your own temple. <laughs> Can I hear an amen? Am I not better? So that man was, he, he was stabilized. That woman was stabilized. He, he was, he, 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 that husband was an anchor. Hallelujah. To stabilize the ship of her destiny. Are you still there? That's why the Bible says, evil company corrupt good character. When you have people who fret, why will you not fret? When you have people who are discouraged, why will you not be discouraged? What would they tell you? My brother, don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Although I'm discouraged, but don't be discouraged. <laughs> what? You, you, you are discouraged, you are down, and you're telling me not to be discouraged. I will only join you with discouragement. Ah, in any, any entity designed by the devil to discourage you, may God take away that discouragement. Yeah. Because it has to do with destiny. It has to do with what? Destiny. And in the name of Jesus, your destiny will not be dashed. Sometimes, it may be just one person. Hallelujah. You may just need just one. But you know what? Sometimes, the people that will discourage you can be plenty. I'm preparing your heart because, you see, we will meet this thing in this world. In different forms. Sometimes you need a person, somebody in the race of life to stabilize you. To put you in focus, at least calm you down so that you can get to the place of effectual prayer. The place where prayer works. The place where prayers can be answered. Ask yourself, can she not pray in her house and prayer will be answered? What if God have ordained that no, if you, 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 you say return unto me and I will return to you, not that I will return to you first. You return to me and I will give you your returns. 
Can I hear an amen? I pray that your returns be released unto you. But you have the responsibility to always come to him. To, you need something, you are the one to go. Are you following me? You are the one that need him. So you are the one to go. Keep coming until your return comes. Amen. Keep coming until your return comes. Amen. Even though the Bible says that uh, men ought always to pray, according to that parable that Jesus gave in Luke chapter 18, in Luke chapter 18, 1 to 8, Luke chapter 18, 1 to 8, he, he, men ought, 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 ought always to pray. You know that story about the woman who was crying to the king that he should intervene and all that stuff. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Luke 18, 1 to 8. You can read that one later. Now, but you see, you need someone. You need something or someone at one point in time. Don't say I can do it all by myself. That would be a trap. Even the disciples at one point in time could not pray. And Jesus said unto them, could you not even hold up for an hour? They were following Jesus. They have been in the school of prayer for a long time. And yet, they could, there are times in your life now that where prayer is just not what you want to do. The strength to have given testimony here, yeah, my, my own experience. There are times that things will just happen. You know, you just cannot pray. <laughs> but help is available for you. Sometimes you need a Jonathan, just like David needed. Hallelujah. You need a Jonathan. If you can locate your Jonathan, keep him. Keep her or keep it. Are you following me? David needed, if not for Jonathan, just like if not for God, David wouldn't have made it. <laughs> he was just the person that God sent to him. In fact, you know what he said? He said that the love that Jonathan had for him was the love between a man and a woman. But you know what happened? Before that happened, David was distressed. Distress can bring about discouragement. Look at the scripture in 2 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 28. 2 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 26 rather. 2 Samuel 1, 26. He said, I am distressed for thee, my brother Jonathan. Very pleasant, very pleasant has thou been unto me. My love, thy love to me was wonderful. Passing the love of a woman. Everybody say it to me, love. love. Say it now. Uh, it doesn't fit your mouth. Say love. love. So love is the key. <laughs> love, I mean, God's agape kind of love. Is the key. Just like we saw in our, our uh, uh, of this morning, our open heaven this morning. Love. Love. Very, very important. In 1 Samuel, watch this. I want to prove to you that it, sometimes you may be, you may just be by yourself in the midst of discouraging lots. A lot of people, you know, sometimes eh, it's because this is my friend. Uh, did not encourage me or because this is my brother or this is my wife this is my husband did not encourage me you know you can't find you you may be the only one remaining but i have good news for you don't be discouraged Amen. but there's something you can do there's always there is always an escape for those that are his Amen. there is always an escape in the name of jesus you will escape Amen. I, I, I said for every trap of the devil you will escape First Samuel chapter 30 and verse 6. First Samuel 30 verse 6. And David was greatly distressed. For the people spake of doing what? Stoning him. Because the soul of the people was what? Grieved. Every man for his own son and for his daughter. But David did what? He encouraged us our way of escape. In some circumstances, the person you expect encouragement from may not come. 
and that does not make them evil people. They too, they are going through their own stress. Hallelujah. They are going through their own stress. To look at your own stress now is a mirage. So don't now say, you see, didn't you encourage me? No, 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 no. Because you see, this man went to town with a good warrior. And by the time they came back, they had burned down Ziglar, took their wife. And all the big men were crying. And then you want, you would, as because you are the king, you now expect that they should encourage you. Ah. <laughs> they are grieving. They are sorrowing. And you are expecting to be encouraged. David looked at it and said, mm, I won't expect like this. Uh, I will encourage myself. <laughs> I will do what? Encourage I will encourage myself. I won't wait for somebody to be wishing me good. I will wish myself good. Hallelujah. Amen. When you get to the home, somebody did not welcome you. Welcome yourself. Yes. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Yes, Don't say, ah, I welcome myself. Wonderful. Home. Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't say, eh, you did not welcome me, Abby. You are just causing trouble. Ah, I speak peace into your destiny. Yeah. I speak peace into your destiny. Yeah. You know, until you are God dependent, you may be forever subjected to the devil. You must be God dependent. He encouraged himself in the Lord. Hear me. Don't miss that part. In the Lord. In the Lord. If you are not in the law, to encourage yourself will be impossible. You don't have the language. You don't have what you don't have what it takes. Because what it takes to encourage yourself, it comes from God. The word of God. The amount you have taken in. So in times of such distress, when somebody does not comfort you, the comforter is already doing his job. Can I hear an amen? Praise God. And he encouraged himself in the law. The question, my brethren, is are you in the law? Uh, when you are in that circumstance, your test of being in the Lord is, is on ground. The exam of being in the Lord is at display. When circumstance happen and it's not adding up, your action and reaction will tell whether you are in the law or not. And that is what is interesting to God. There's a change for you. Yeah. I said there's a change for you. Amen. Oh, there's a change for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. When you are by yourself, what would you do? How do you encourage yourself you, if you are not in the law? In fact, in fact, men, men do not pray always. God said it is important that men should pray always. But you see, men don't pray always. Always. And that is why God gave us someone to help us. In every time, He's always there to help us. Who is that person? The Holy Ghost. Because He knew we are not complete in ourselves. And He knows He has created what He wants us to pray. But men will not pray. So they need the Holy Spirit. So in Romans chapter 8 and verse 26, Romans 8 26, it says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our inability to pray, helpeth our infirmities, helpeth our weakness, helpeth our insufficiency. He helped our weak heart. For we know not what we should pray as we are. He said, but the Holy Ghost, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for who? For us, with groaning which cannot be uttered, which cannot be ignored, which cannot be put aside, which cannot be put aside. Hallelujah. I mean, we need to thank God for the Holy Spirit. That's why when people fake the Holy Spirit, they don't know that they are disarming themselves. They are, they are, they are ignoring their arm, divine armory. Hallelujah. Because God knows what we face on this earth. Although you are in the world, you are not of the world. So I give you the Holy Spirit. He said, I go. But if I do not go, the comforter will not come. And you need the comforter here. If you don't have him, you will not pray. If you don't pray, you become a prey. And God will not apologize because he gave you what? 
He gave you the Holy Spirit. Ah, in the name of Jesus, victory is yours. Amen. Why prayer? Quickly. Oh, thank you, mighty God. Why prayer? But, you will know why prayer next week. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. You will know why prayer next week. You will know why prayer next week. But I want to announce to you, brethren, that you must pray. And the good news is that God has given you. He has already given you what it takes to be a prayer machine. In every circumstance. Amen. Talking about the power of prayer. In, in, in daring circumstances. It is because of your circumstances and all the challenges we face on this earth. That's why the Bible says we must pray. Ah, in the name of Jesus Christ, eh, those, those flood of negative circumstance will not drown you. Amen. Ah, Jesus walked on water. What it takes to walk over that challenge, receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. And as you enter into this week, that challenge will bow. Amen. That challenge will come under you. As you give yourself to prayer, I decree that in the name of Jesus, those challenging circumstances will be defeated. Rise up on your feet. You are going to pray that Lord, stir up the embers of the Holy Ghost inside of me. That I may give myself to prayer. Stir up your Holy Spirit inside of me. Lift up your voice and pray. Father, stir up the Holy Spirit. And don't find the embers of prayer. Effective prayer in my life. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray. Nekori batale kurimosi glaro bado neli rashtaraba. Korendele krotia. Irasha Gadaba, blessed be your name. Thank you, my kid. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. You are going to, we are going to pray in unity and Christ. Say, Father, in this month of good courage, stir up the Holy Ghost inside of me. Lift up your voice and pray. Stir up the Holy Ghost inside of me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, stir up the Holy Ghost. Let the Holy Ghost be stirred up. Are you praying? Father, stir up the Holy Ghost. Father, stir up the Holy Ghost inside of me. Stir up the Holy Ghost inside of me. Stir up the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Lord, stir up the Holy Ghost inside of me. in the libro de Stir up the Holy Ghost inside of me, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, stir up the Holy Ghost inside of me. Thank you, my God. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. I hear the voice of the Spirit saying, your circumstance is your stirring up. Amen. Your circumstance is, is your stirring up moment. Hallelujah. When your circumstance is being stared, jump into it by a good courage. And your victory will emerge. Uh, please don't be like that man who remained for 38 years watching, staring up every day into every year. Don't watch. That is a time robber. In the name of Jesus. Ah, no devil will truncate your joy. 